Hello, my name is Frank Donnelly and I'm the Geospatial Data Librarian at Baruch College, City University of New York, and author of the book Exploring the U.S. Census, Your Guide to America's Data. In this screencast, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use the NYC Population Fact Finder, which you can find at popfactfinder.planning.nyc.gov, or you can just do a search for NYC Population Fact Finder and that will bring you here. Uh, this, is cr this was created by the Population Division of the New York City Planning Office, and it is a great tool for easily accessing recent census data profiles for neighborhoods in New York City. Now, many state and local governments will create tools or generate extracts of census data to make the data more accessible to their constituents. Uh, they can achieve this by focusing on just their area and then filtering out all the rest of the data in the United States, and also by focusing just on the broad data profile tables that the Census Bureau publishes. Resources like this one are also great for providing census data for local geographies, places like neighborhoods, wards, planning areas, places that the Census Bureau doesn't publish data for. So in this case, uh, the city provides data for these things called Neighborhood Tabulation Areas, or NTAs. They create the NTAs by taking these small census tract areas, and then they combine them to form um, what, New York what most residents of New York City would consider to be neighborhoods, and they assign them recognizable neighborhood names. So this makes it easier for people to find data about neighborhoods, and in this case it also provides more reliable estimates from the American Community Survey than the census tracts do because we're dealing with a larger area, a bigger sample, so we can get a little bit of a more reliable estimate. So when you start out at this site, you have a choice. You have your geographies up here. You have the neighborhood tabulation areas, which I just mentioned. There are the census tracts. These are small statistical areas created by the Census Bureau that are designed to have about 4,000 people within a range of 1,200 to 8,000 people. Uh, below that is the census block level. You can see these are really small. There isn't a lot of data published at the block level, so I'm really not going to talk about that in this screencast. At the other end of the scale, here you have the Pumas, or public use microdata areas. These are really large, kind of like supersized census tracts. They're designed to have about 100,000 people, and in New York City they are somewhat analogous to the city's community districts. What we're going to look at here is I'm going to click on the neighborhoods or NTAs. There are a few ways you can navigate this map. If you hold down the left mouse button that will allow you to basically drag the map around and then you can use your mouse or these buttons on the left hand side here uh, to zoom in or out and of course as you zoom in you start to see a little bit more detail with the streets and the parks. Let's say I'm interested in getting a profile for Gramercy. I can just click on Gramercy and that highlights it. And then once the area I want is highlighted, I can click on this profile button. And we'll just wait a second for that to load. And by default, it brings us to the demographic profile table in the American Community Survey. And I can scroll down a little bit here and get a sense for the kind of data that's in this profile. So we have the population broken down by age and by sex and then by race and Hispanic origin. And then there is more detailed information for specific Hispanic and Asian subgroups. If I want to look at a different profile, I can just come up to one of the other tabs here, social, economic, or housing, let's say economic. When I click on one of the tabs, I can scroll down just like I did before, or I have the option to jump to a specific section, for example, like income and benefits, and that will scroll me down in this profile. Uh, and I can see the total number of households in different income brackets, mean and median income. And you can scroll through these and get a pretty good sense for the kind of information that the Census Bureau collects. So just under this economic tab, we have health insurance coverage, uh, people in poverty, ratio of income to poverty, above the income, different kinds of workers, the industry that they're employed in, uh, how people commute to work, uh, and some basic information about the labor force. So you should go ahead and scroll through here and you'll get a good sense for the, like I said, the type of information that's collected in the census. The American Community Survey is a rolling sample survey of addresses. About three and a half million addresses in the United States are captured each year. And at the end of the year, the Census Bureau publishes two different period estimates. 
They'll publish a one-year estimate for all places in the United States that have at least 65,000 people or more, and they'll publish a five-year estimate for all areas in the United States, regardless of how big or small they are, down to the census tract and census block group levels. So for the small areas, they can't produce reliable estimates every single year, uh, so they collect five years of data and average that together. And then every year, they'll update the estimate by dropping the oldest year and adding the newest one. The, pop the population fact finder here is always going to give you the latest five-year estimate. Um, if you want to learn more about the American Community Survey, I suggest you go back to the first video in this series uh, where I talk about uh, basically the Census Bureau basics and I compare the different data sets and you can get more information about how the ACS is collected there. One thing though we should look at here um, in explaining how the ACS works, there's a little button here that says show reliability data. I'm going to check that and that adds a bunch of extra columns to our table. The estimates from the American Community Survey represent the midpoint of a possible range of values. So for example, these numbers are not exact counts, but they're estimates with a range of values. So for example, in the Gramercy neighborhood, we can say there were, between these this five years of 2014 to 2018, there were approximately 18,700 people in the labor force, plus or minus 1,000. So that means the labor force number could actually be 1,000 lower or higher than this estimate. This number here, the margin of error, abbreviated as MO, gives you the possible range of values around this estimate, which represents the midpoint. This other value here, called a CV, or coefficient of variation, this is just an indicator that uh, gives you some measure of how reliable the estimate is. And what, this, what the population division in the city recommends is that if the CV value for an estimate is 20 or below, then it's considered to be a reasonably good estimate. On the other hand, if it's higher than 20, they, you can see here with the armed forces, that number is small, they gray that estimate out. It's kind of a warning to you that, hey, you know, you shouldn't really interpret this estimate too precisely. So for example, there might be 111 people in the armed forces plus or minus 121. <laughs> so not a really good estimate. So when looking at the ACS numbers, do make sure that you pay attention to the margin of error for the estimate. If the estimate is too unreliable, then you should state that. And you can try and get a better estimate by looking at a larger geographic area. All right, other things to point out. When we look at our area, automatically it's going to be compared to the rest of New York City. But if you want to compare your neighborhood to the specific borough that it's in, since we're in Manhattan, you can do that. Or you can even compare a neighborhood to another neighborhood. Uh, I'll just choose Manhattan here. And then I'll get the values for Manhattan uh, in the second set of columns. Another option is if you want to look at change over time, click this little radio button and that will change the table down here so that we can compare this most recent five-year period estimate to an older five-year period of estimate that and they don't overlap. Um, so just a quick way to get kind of a historical comparison. In many cases for smaller areas the actual change between one time period and the next the numbers are often not going to be significant because uh, the values are so small and the time frame uh, is not big enough. But if you look at a larger area, you'll start to see more reliable estimates for the change. All right, so we've seen the different profiles, how you can look at change over time. The other thing I should point out is that we have the four profile tables that are published as part of the ACS. This last tab here, or this first tab, I should say, that just says census. If we click on that, this data is from a different data set. It comes from the actual 10-year decennial census. So the numbers on this page are not estimates, but they are actual counts of the population uh, as of April 1st that year. Since I still have the change over time button checked, in this case it's comparing 2010 to the year 2000, but if I go back and check the radio button for just the decennial census there, then I'll have the neighborhood value here and then the value for Manhattan or whatever other place I want to compare it to. Uh, pretty soon, uh, within a couple years, we should have estimates for 2020. If you want to, uh, I should also point out that the decennial census compared to the ACS is not going to be as detailed. Uh, it's going to have data on race, age, sex, how people are related to one another, some basic information about housing units. 
but all of the detailed socioeconomic characteristics are going to be in the ACS and not in the 10-year census. Let's say that you want to actually download some of this data. You have a few ways of doing it. If you only want to download a specific table, basically a section of the profile, above each table there's a thing that says copy table to clipboard. And by doing that, it will highlight everything and copy it. And then if you open up, you know, like Microsoft Word or something else, then you can do a control V and paste the table there. Alternatively, if you want to download everything on this page, there's a download data button up here that you can click. And this will download this as a CSV file, which you can then open up in Excel or LibreOffice Calc or another spreadsheet. So pretty easy to capture the data. All right, that's basically how the profiles work. This little fold-out map will return us to our selection view. Just a couple of other things that I wanted to demonstrate. One of the strengths of this tool is that while it makes it easy for you to get data for these predefined areas, it's also possible that you can create your own areas by selecting multiple ones, and the fact finder will aggregate the data for that area. Just to give you an example, let's say I'm interested in getting data for the neighborhood where I live. Um, I'm going to unselect Gramercy for now by hitting this button that says Clear Selection. And just to demonstrate how the search feature works, I'm going to look for Inwood. And this search feature can be used for finding a specific address, and then you'll zoom into that address and then can select the area around it. Or it can be used for locating the various geographies. So here's my neighborhood. I'll click on that and it will zoom me to the top of Manhattan and it will outline the neighborhood that I was searching for here in these dotted or dashed lines rather. Uh, if I clear the search up here it will remove those dashed lines and now I can come onto the map and just click on the area to select it. Now according to the definitions being used here Marble Hill and Inwood are being combined into one neighborhood but they're actually two separate neighborhoods. Marble Hill is the smaller area up here and then Inwood is the larger area down here. Let's say if I wanted to just get information for Inwood what I can do is with the neighborhood selected if I select census tract it will now show me all of the census tracts that fall within that neighborhood and it selects all of them. Now I can come over here and I can individually add or remove census tracts by just clicking on them. So if I click once it'll add it, click again it'll remove it. So let's say I'll remove Marble Hill, maybe I'll add just this park in here just as an example. And now I have these seven census tracts selected which basically represent the neighborhood of Inwood. If I click on view profile now, The fact finder will take the data for those seven census tracts, will, basic, will sum them all together, and then provide me an estimate for this summary. Not only do I get the new estimate, but it also recalculates the margin of error for me too. This is a particularly powerful feature because if you needed to recalculate the margin of error of your own in a spreadsheet or something like that, it can be a bit of a laborious process. So. This is great, it's a real time saver. The other thing that's pretty cool about this is that once you create your own profiles using custom areas, you can share them with other people by basically just copying and then giving this URL to somebody else. Every time you create a customized area, a unique and customized URL is also created. So you can share this link with people and they'll be able to go back and see exactly the area that you selected which is another incredibly useful feature of this tool. All right, let's go back one more time. There are a few other things that you can look at. I'm going to clear the selection for the moment. There are a number of advanced options here. If you wanted to add some additional reference layers to the map, for example, you know, in New York City, it's helpful to see where all the subways and the subway stations are. You can add that and it will draw those onto the map. Uh, let's also say, for example, what if I want to get um, all the data for areas that are within a certain distance of a subway station? There is this draw tool where you can draw an area or a radius around a specific point. So if I choose radius, I can come over here to a subway station like this one. I can just do a single click and then I can drag this out to a certain number of feet in this case, like, I don't know, let's say when I get about a thousand feet, more or less, 
pretty good. If I click on that, then that basically will select everything that is within a thousand feet of that census, within a thousand feet of the point that you select. All right, there are a number of other features that you can check out here on your own, but feel free to explore that. As I said, a really nice and convenient tool for getting uh, a quick and easy data profile for New York City neighborhoods. If you're interested in learning more about the census, I would recommend that you check out the other videos in this series where I demonstrate other sources. So if you're looking for data outside of New York City, I also demonstrate how to use data.census.gov as well as the Missouri Census Data Center. And you can check out my book, Exploring the U.S. Census, Your Guide to America's Data, if you really want to delve into the census and learn how to use it more. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.